check it out. It's your boy Debo. You're watching Debo the Don TV. When you have a moment, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment below, and don't forget to hit that notification button. Hello, everyone. My name is Debo. Thank you for tuning in to Debo the Don TV. Are you listening? Now I just want to backtrack a little bit. I'm gonna ask you a few questions. Just give us some some background information on this on Limelight. Limelight Car Club. Yes. It was started by myself, my buddy Randy, Tim Pratt, and Caesar Barrios Alba. We're the we're the original founding members of Limelight Car Club. Gosh, I want to say. 2001 maybe yeah 2002 somewhere in there okay um the club grew pretty quick we ended up having a decent amount of people in our central florida chapter expanded to an ocala chapter and then expanded to a kentucky chapter which was headed up by my buddy rick pokorowski okay and honestly out of all of our chapters the kentucky chapter was doing the most okay that's 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 la of the east coast over there when it comes to low riding or at least it was don't know if it is anymore. I haven't been to Kentucky in years, but they were getting down, man. In, in our Kentucky chapter, we had hoppers, we had car dancers, we had all kinds of shit. You we had, had the tools, whole game. Cars, everything. And um, the thing that really happened with Lion Light, man, is it just it kind of got too big, too fast, and none of us were really prepared to know how to manage and handle a car club. You know, we just we knew we didn't want to be part of one of the big name nationwide clubs. And we want to do our own thing, so we did it. And it just, it, it kind of just outgrew us really quick. We had conflicts between the chapters and shit just started to fall apart. And fortunately, we did leave the low riding scene as a club still with a good taste in everybody's mouth. And everybody knew and respected Limelight Car Club. Yeah. Um, the club was dormant for a very long time I really wanted to bring it back out myself, but one, I really haven't had anything on the road in years. You know, real life took over, mm -hmm. paying bills, dealing with children and families and divorces and things like that, man. It's just, real life just took over and kicked me in the ass. Yes. So I never had the chance to build something to bring Limelight back out. But I heard about a buddy of mine that was leaving a club and wanting to create his own club. And I reached out to him, I said, look, man, I'm the founding member of this club. I see what you guys are doing in the streets. And to me, you guys represent what we always wanted and felt limelight should be. In the streets, having fun, enjoying your lowriders. Yeah. I said, so this was my old club. Yeah. If you like it, I would be honored to let you take this club over and rebuild it. And that was to my boy, Daryl Jones. Okay. Who's running Limelight Car Club today. Okay. Well, so I see you, um, <clears throat> you're part of Firm Estilo. Firm Estilo, yeah. Renee was one of the uh, guests, previous guests on Debo to Don TV. Now I want to ask you, why Firm Estilo rather than Limelight, since you were the founding member? Well, I joined Firm Estilo long before I even handed over Limelight to Daryl. Okay. Um, I've had a few clubs that have hit me up. Some some of my old Limelight members that are in another club now offered me their club. But I was working out of the shop with members of Firm Estilo. Yes. I was with them every single day, seven days a week okay. for a few years. Yes. And it just it, it felt like home. Yes. You know it, this club to me right here yes. is a family. We have our ups and downs. We fight like cats and dogs. We'll get in each other's shit. But at the end of the day, we love each other and we'll back each other to the death. I mean, this is, this is family. And spending as much time as I did with them and seeing how they were, I just, I felt at home there. Okay. And they made me the offer to, um, to prospect. And I did. I said, yes, you know, I want to do it. Okay. Now, um, 
There's been some rhetoric online where people called you out and they said that uh, they put you in the category of a has-been. Yep. You know, you hear the term, it's not what you did, it's what you're currently doing. So for the people who are co-signing those that statement, what are you currently doing in terms of low riding? Do you have a car? Do you have a project? Well, you first, I'm going to show my age here right now. Yes. In the infamous words of my boy, Rakim Allah. Yes. It ain't where you're from, it's where you're at. And to some extent, they're right. But at the same point, you got to respect where I'm from. I was building lowriders before half of these kids could even walk and talk. Mm. But they want to throw me under the bus because real life came and kicked me in the ass and I've had some major setbacks financially that stopped me from being able to build. Um, here in recent years, I've had a few cars that I've started as projects. Yeah. One thing led to another and the projects that I began ended up having problems that would put it would cost more to fix the car to get it to where I could even start building as a low rider than what the car would even be worth. Okay. So I've had two Lincolns that way. I've currently got a 93 Cadillac Rome and a 91 Cadillac Fleet with Rome. The 93 is going to be a daily driver. I hear all the time, oh, you can't make a daily driver out of a low rider. Bullshit. Every low rider I've ever owned is my daily driver. For God's sakes, man, I deliver pizzas in my fucking Cadillac. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse the language. <laughs> But that's that's the plan for this 93. It, it's, it's a clean enough car. I mean, it ain't immaculate, but it's clean enough to get a set of rims on it, juice it, put my stereo on it, and have something nice to hit and you know, play with in the streets. Okay. My 91, that's going to be a much longer project. Okay. I, got, I got bigger plans for that. I'm still not going to make a turntable show call because I don't give a shit about the turntable in the show. It's going to be for the streets. Yes. But if I live long enough to get that car done, yeah. Like, keep in mind, guys, I'm almost 50 years old, so yeah. I am an OG in this shit. Yes. Not to have a big head, I'm just saying, I've been doing this shit for a long-ass time. Yes. If God's willing to let me live long enough to finish my 91 Brome, that's going to be a bad bitch. Okay. I've got, right. I've got some major, major plans for that. So for all the Generation X children, Granddaddy is coming, and um, we bring that wind paddle, so be ready. Um... What would you like to see change here in Florida, well, Central Florida, in terms of low riding? What, what do you think is holding the community back? And what do you think, what elements do you think are gonna progress the community to uh, long-standing participation and global recognition? To be honest, I couldn't really tell you what's gonna get them out there to do that. What I'd like to see change is I'd like to see low riding come back to the streets where it belongs. Okay. I'm tired of trailer queens. You know, you got chrome undercarriage. Oh, I don't want to drive. I got chrome undercarriage. Well, you chose that, but it's a low rider, man. It's not a low trailer rider. It's a fucking low rider. Put it on the goddamn streets. <clears throat> if you're cruising, you see somebody filming, tap a switch. You ain't got to hit back bumper. If you're cruising, you're riding low, hit the front switch. Lock it up in the front. If you're riding high, dump the ass. Do something. You know, get, get back to low riding. Man. Yeah. Take low riding to the streets. Okay. All right. Well, um, before we wrap this interview up, is there anything you'd like to say to anyone out there in terms of the Ryan Old School brand, the John Bianca uh, brand? Well, what do you want to say to the people? Because this is your moment to speak. Well, as far as my as far as riding old schools goes, look us up. Riding Old Schools on Facebook, that's R-I-D-I-N-O-L-E-S-K-O-O-L-S. -O 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 look us up on Facebook, look us up on Instagram, look us up on YouTube. We also have Riding Old Schools Boulevard Bangers on Instagram and Facebook, which is strictly for the lowrider community. Um, we've got Riding Old Schools Apparel. You can, you can look that up in hashtag Riding Old Schools Apparel on Instagram, and you'll see the line of shirts that we currently ha have and offer. Um, just keep an eye on that YouTube. Hit that button to subscribe. Just like you need to hit that button for Debo to Don TV and subscribe. This man's going to do big things right here. You know? Um, riding old schools is, is something I'm very passionate about. Something my buddy T's very passionate about. The way that came about has been, I want to say, about five years now. And it started out with him just having a page, finding pictures of cool cars online and posting them. And then we got to talking, I'm like, man, the hell with pictures online, so why don't we just start going to these shows and taking our own pictures and posting them? And it's just kind of 
spiraled from there, you know, spiral upward instead of downward. And, you know, we're, we're trying to build a brand here. So uh, for all the people wanting to get that exclusive uh, car show footage, but as well as those tees, Ryan Old Schools, hit this man up, like you said, you tell want, him. If you want a photo shoot for your car, hit me up, let me know. I got models that I work with that are more than happy to come out and, and I deal with some sexy chicks, man. So you got some good looking women to put on your cars. Um, you know, we love that shit, man. That's, that's, life is cars for us. For me, this shit ain't a hobby. I'm in the car game strong, but to me it ain't a game, it's my lifestyle. I may not have a low rider at the moment, but low riding's in my blood. It's, it, I didn't flip the script and go to a dunk when dunks became popular. I mm -hmm. stayed low rider. No, no, no disrespect to the dunks. There's some badass dunks out there. And riding old schools, we will shoot your dunk. So, but my personal taste is low riding. It always has been since I was that big and seen that damn Cadillac from Roly Fernandez. And uh, like I said, it's, it, it's a lifestyle, man. It, it is a way of life. It's not a hobby. Mm. So, hey, John, I appreciate you for spending your time on Debo to Don TV. I wish you nothing but success and massive blessings in everything that you do in your personal life, but as well as in your business life. And uh, we will see you on the streets. Oh, yeah, you'll be yeah, we're gonna, gonna see you on the streets and- um, hopefully, hopefully be with this 93 Cadillac, unless some oh, catastrophe goes wrong it, with that It's too. gonna happen. And I, and I wanna <laughs> say to everyone that uh, that's watching, you know, I started Debo to Don TV because I wanted to pay homage to my forefathers, the people that came before me. Um, there's a question mark, you know, and not just this culture, but also rap, um, I feel like if you look at someone that plays basketball or football, you look at a kid for him, what kind of move that they did, who, who's had, what their stats are. And when it comes to low rider, and it's like a dummy factor, you know, no one knows who was prevalent during this time period. No one has no street education. And, and, and that's why I said, you know, this platform is sucker free, buster free, HIV free, no STD. Because I feel like you got a lot of CB4 characters that are in the low rider community. Everyone wants to wear diggies and chucks on the weekends. They want to listen to Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg like we in the G-Funk era. No. Like they said to him, it's not what you did, it's what you're doing. Okay, well let's fast forward and let's be current as far as our information. And having current information is having historical information and historical awareness. So yeah, you don't know where you're going unless you know where you come from and I'll leave you with that. He said, man, the people that say it ain't what you've done in the past, what are you doing now? Well, I'll tell you what, people like me, people like my boy Alan Griffith Sr., the cats from Low Life Car Club that have been doing this shit for damn near 30 years plus, it, it, it is what we've done, because we, we're the ones that paved the way for what y'all are doing now. It's sad when I talk to some of these young cats, man, and I'll show them a picture of Loco 64. They don't have a clue. Oh man, that car's cool, where's, where's that car from? What do you mean, where's that car from, dude? You don't know who this is? No, that's Loco 64. Mm -hmm. Oh, is, is, he, is he out in Cali right now? Well, he is somewhere, but this car is from the late 80s, early 90s. You know, this is, this is an icon, Wrapped with Envy from Derek Jagru, an icon. You know, Punch 84, icons. These, these are cars that every lowrider should know who they are. I don't care if you're, if you're into lowriding and you're 12 years old, you should know who these old school cats are because they're the ones that paved the way. On the East Coast, I don't want to necessarily say yes, I personally paved the way, but it's us older cats, man, us 49, 50, 51, 52 year old dudes that have been doing this for so long that paved the way. You know, if we didn't do this shit, y'all wouldn't even know about it probably. That's, that's my thought on it. Mm. Well said. Until the next time.